Hi boys and girls, it's great to be back with you again. And actually back in my office, haven't been here for a, a few days here in the study. I've been up on a retreat. Retreat is where ministers and, and lay people too can go away to pray and reflect. And this was a retreat um, organized by a presbytery, which is an area, um, quite a big area actually, bigger than Auckland, and uh, about 40 ministers gathered. I want to read to you today uh, a story called Prosper's Mountain. It's a, it's a great story and it's by Henrietta Branford and Chris Baker. There once was an old man called Felix. There he is there. Can you see him? Felix was a gardener. When he was young, he wanted a house full of children, but none came. Most days he rose early, drank a cup of mint tea with his good friend Dorcas. Dorcas is the hen, there's Dorcas. And strolled under the trees. All day he worked in his garden and in the evening he mended things. One morning everything changed. Felix was in the kitchen making tea when he heard a commotion in the barn. Out he ran and found Dorcas up on a rafter, rafter cackling fit to bust. Down on the floor, a great big egg was cracking open. Out rolled a baby boy. He sat up in one half of the eggshell like a prince on his potty. Felix made him a crib. Dorcas lined it with sheep's wool. They borrowed a goat for milk from the old woman next door. And they were happy. Where he came from, they never found out. But the egg baby made himself at home. He took his milk straight from the goat. He laughed, he played, and his smile lit up the village. Everybody was his friend. Felix and Dorcas called him Prosper. And there was no trouble until his wings began to grow. His wings. Sorry about the light coming into my study here. It makes it hard to see, doesn't it? You must be careful now, said Felix. People don't like anybody different. He made Prosper a cloak and showed him how to hide his wings. The cloak was hot and heavy, and Prosper didn't want to wear it. You must, said Dorcas. Up on the mountain where nobody goes, it will be safe to spread your wings and feel your two feet leave the ground. Down here in the village, never. It'd be kind of cool to have wings, wouldn't it? The people in the village were farmers. As long as the wind blew and the rain fell, Nobody went hungry. But around the time that Prosper learned to fly, the weather changed. The wind dropped and the rain stopped. Crops withered on the stalk and times grew hard. One night as Prosper came down off the mountain, the goat woman stopped him. She'd been up there too, studying the weather. Did you see a strange bird over the mountain, she asked? Only I thought I did, so I wondered. No, said Prosper, I saw no bird. There he is with the one. But still the goat woman wondered. And the next time Prosper went up the mountain, she followed him. Well, that set the cat amongst the pigeons. That put the fat in the fire. Because once she'd seen, she had to tell. She told the mayor. There she is there. He was rich and powerful, but all his crops were dying. A child with wings, he said to his wife, is not a proper child. To my belief, that child has killed the wind and dried up all the rain. Do you think so, asked his wife. I know so, said the mayor. And he called a big meeting. 
Dorcas hid herself and listened. As soon as she knew what the village was planning, she ran home to Felix, and the two of them did some deep talking. They were still talking when a stone flew through the window. They pulled Prosper from his bed and ran out the back door and away up the mountain. Night fell as they stumbled up the rocky path, but they did not stop until they climbed the first ridge. Looking back, they saw their old home burning. The goat woman watched, red-faced with shame. What could she do? What could Prosper do up on the mountain but watch his home burn? We could go down and fright, fight, he said. No, Felix answered, we could not. I'm old, you're young, and Dorcas is a hen. Up they went until the air cut deep and the cold caught them and squeezed them and the snow piled a white hill over them. It was a long and bitter night. In the morning, Prosper climbed out of the snowdrift, took off his cloak and wrapped it around Felix and Dorcas. Then he flew up until the mountain blazed and dazzled under him. There's Felix and Prosper and Dorcas. The towers of green eye shone. There's, there he is flying. The towers of green eye shone in the sun and frost fires burned from every jagged peak. Off in the west, the storm clouds gathered fat with snow. Even as Prosper watched, they boiled and curdled around the mountain peaks, hiding the sun and blotting out the light. Wind ripped the snow from the high tops and sent it streaming like smoke across the sky. The air grew thick and hard as iron. That storm will kill us if it finds us on the mountain, said Prosper, and he flew down to where Dorcas and Felix lay still as stone. Well, my speckled egg, croaked Dorcas. Where have you been? What have you seen? I've seen a great storm coming, said Prosper. We must get off the mountain quickly. We must go down to the village and find shelter. We'll find no shelter there, said Felix. We'll die if we go back. We'll die if we don't, said Prosper. The path down the mountain was slippery and steep. The wind battered them and the snow blinded them. But Prosper flew on ahead and the old ones followed trembling with fear of what was waiting for them in the valley. The mayor was waiting, with a stick in his hand and half the village at his back. How dare you show your face, bird boy, he shouted. We want no curses here. You killed the wind and dried up the rain, you with your wicked wings. He tore at Prosper's cloak, raised his stick high over Prosper's back. The sky grew dark and the thunder growled. A flash of lightning stabbed the mountain. Hard hooves pattered on the dusty road and the goat woman came running. Fool! She cackled at the mare. Numbskull! Look at the sky! The mare tipped his head back. A gust of wind whipped off his hat and sent it bowling down the road. Fat drops of water plopped onto his face. He dropped his stick and let go of Prosper. There is there. The smell of rain on dust was everywhere. The villagers breathed deeply. Shame filled their hearts for what they had done and nearly done. What now? asked Dorcas, helping Prosper to speak. You can stay with me, said the goat woman, until you've built a new house. A chink appeared between the storm and clouds and the sun peeped through turning the ice on Prosper's wings to diamonds. Felix picked up the tattered cloak and held it out. It was a good cloak, Father, Prosper said, but I don't need it now. I will not wear it any more. He held it against the sky to let the rain shine through the holes. The wind swooped down. It took the old cloak and it tossed it over the mountain. an interesting story, isn't it? It's about fear. Fear of someone who's different, leading into violence. 
It's a story repeated many times in human history. People fearing others because they look different. Different skin pigmentation. Differences in all sorts of ways. And then that fear, mixing with the superstition about why things are going bad and they look for someone to blame. It's called scapegoating sometimes. Blaming someone for something that's happening like no rain. And terrible things have been done throughout human history to people like that. And then that goat woman, the one who ratted on him, but was also the one who realised what she'd done and turned around, she transformed and came to his rescue, his defence. And all throughout, of course, his father, Felix, who loved him, carried on loving him, suffered because of him, wanted to protect him. And it always pays to have a talking hen as well. You got a talking hen? Everybody should have a talking hen. Have a lovely week. Bye.